Hey guys, what is up? My name is Ebony if you're new to my channel and I'm a naturopathic nutritionist and today's video we're talking about probably one of the most important things when it comes to balancing your hormones which is supporting your liver. So today I'm going to be sharing loads of tips to support your liver, things that you can start doing straight away and get into your daily um, like practices, daily habits with your diet or even just lifestyle that are going to really impact your liver health. The reason your liver is so important when it comes to your hormones is because one, it filters your hormones, it also actually controls the balance with your hormones as well, it plays a big role there, but also your liver detoxifies literally everything that we even touch in our life. Like it's not even just from an internal detoxification point of view, even things like skincare products we put on our skin, we absorb them, our liver detoxes that. So it's so important that we support our liver um, when it comes to hormones, but also just in general, if I'm gonna be honest. I also love this fact that your liver has over 500 functions, so we've got to give it some love. If you aren't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also give it a thumbs up if you do enjoy this. You, you know, whenever you decide to dip out, if you stay the whole video, I love you so much. But if you dip out early, please do give it a thumbs up because it really, really does help me out so, so much. So the first one is to increase your cruciferous vegetables. I talk about these blooming <laughs> vegetables with every client um, and I feel like a broken record. But honestly, this is something where it's such a simple tip, but it, seriously impacts the liver in a big way. So cruciferous vegetables, these are on the screen right now, things like cauliflower, broccoli, um, kale, you know, you can see them on the screen. These basically contain something called indole 3 carbonyl. And what this does is it actually um, stimulates and increases our detoxification of our liver. So what I like to recommend is try and favor these vegetables in the diet where you can. Try and get at least one of your portions a day to be of this variety. I personally try and aim for two. I don't even suffer with um, hormonal acne anymore, but because I just wanna support my body's health and its functions, like your liver is so important. So I like to try and aim for two cups or two portions of these vegetables per day. The one thing I am gonna say though, is that if you do have any thyroid concerns, you know, underactive thyroid for example, then if you do consume these vegetables, you definitely need to consume them um, hot, so steam them, like they need to be cooked. Because basically these vegetables do contain something called goitro, goitro oh my God, why can I not say this word? Goitrogens. There we go, goitrogens, Ebony, goitrogens. Um, and basically these can interfere with your thyroid function. Um, so yeah, if you do have a thyroid concerns, definitely make sure you eat them cooked because when you cook them, it actually reduces the goitrogen content. Also, just another thing also to know is if you do have um, you know, a thyroid issues, I would also not recommend eating the high quantity that I'm saying, like two cups a day, like maybe just do like two to three cups in the whole week, maybe. Um, so yeah, just kind of, you wanna just be careful around thyroid concerns. That is just one little um, flag there for you. The next thing that you can do is eat sprouts. And when I say sprouts, I'm talking about broccoli sprouts. So broccoli sprouts is still part of that cruciferous um, vegetable family, but these are fantastic. Um, I should have got them from my fridge. Um, let me go get them from my fridge actually, because I think we should show and tell. So I get these, I just get them in Waitrose. Um, they come like this in a packet. What you want to be looking at on the ingredients list is broccoli sprouts. So this is actually a mix. This has like alfalfa and broccoli in there. But broccoli sprouts are, I believe, three times more potent in the um, indole 3 carbonyl that I mentioned earlier that you get in cruciferous vegetables. So in terms of like for the liver, like these are a superfood. And these, they don't taste of anything. Literally, you can put them on anything, whether it be hot dishes, salads, I stuff them in sandwiches, I put them in my burgers, like I put them in everything. And like I said, you can't taste it. And they are absolutely just such an easy way to give your liver some support. Also great for kids as well, if you wanna just give um, them a little bit of a health kick, just sprinkle a little bit of this into like, um, what you're making, like they not, they can't taste it at all, honestly, I promise you. Right, the next thing that you can do is 
make sure you're drinking enough water. This is quite standard, um, but you know, it has to be said. Make sure you're getting that 1.5 to 2 liters a day because the thing is with our liver, it is as you know, it's a detoxification organ, so it's part of those detoxification pathways. So we want to make sure we're hydrated to help flush and you know support our det detox pathways. Okay, this is my next show and tell and my next tip, which is dandelion tea. Dandelion is so so good for your liver, and I find and a really easy way to get it into your diet um, and or into your practices is through tea form. So it is actually also really lovely um, to make an alternative to coffee. I haven't tried that, um, so I'm not really the one to ask in that sense. I'm sure there's loads of videos or recipes and you know how to do it online. Um, but yeah, apparently it's a really great way um, to come away from coffee because it's a good substitute. But I just have it in tea form. I literally just pop it into a strainer and yeah, pop this into some hot water. You know how to make tea. Um, I also like to add like another tea bag in with it though, just to get give it a little bit more of a taste because it is, in my opinion, quite a bitter taste. But honestly, the health benefits are just so amazing that I'm like, get this stuff in me. Sticking with the herbs, another one that I like is milk thistle. So milk thistle is fantastic because it boosts your um, glutathione. So glutathione is your body's like master antioxidant and um, like detoxification molecule. It is so, so important for your um, liver detoxification. So we really wanna make sure we're supporting our glutathione levels. And yeah, milk thistle is fantastic for that. It's also very protective for the liver as well, just really good for overall like liver health. Um, I actually like to recommend milk thistle in tincture form. Um, in the UK, I like to get my tinctures from a website called Indigo Herbs. I'll leave it linked if you're interested. The quality of their herbs are amazing. I get all my tinctures through them. Add like 20 drops into a little bit of water and then you swallow and you can do that maybe like every morning and evening, like two times a day is good. And that is a really easy way to give your liver some support. The next thing I want to talk about is turmeric. So turmeric is an ingredient I love. Um, super anti-inflammatory, that's kind of the most common, like, you know, obvious thing that people know about turmeric. But turmeric is actually also fantastic for your liver because it also boosts glutathione, but it also protects your liver cells from damage. You know, if you do know your liver is a bit damaged, this would be a lovely um, ingredient to get into your cooking. You could have turmeric lattes. I like to take it in shop form. Um, and yeah, you can experiment with turmeric in many different ways. Okay, next let's talk about some supplements. So a supplement which you can actually take is glutathione, so that is one. The only thing with glutathione as a supplement is it is quite expensive. So um, it depends on your budget. You know, if you can afford and you, you want a budget for that, then you can definitely supplement with that. But the other alternative, which I sometimes recommend, is N-acetylcysteine, which is also known as NAC. Now, this is great because it actually um, helps to create the glutathione, so you still do boost your glutathione by taking NAC. And another benefit of NAC, which I think is really, really interesting to know, is it actually helps to bind to mercury and remove it from the body. So it really helps to reduce any kind of heavy metal exposure you might have. You know, unfortunately, it is something you have to think about because, I mean, if you eat fish, our seas um, do have much more mercury in them now. So we have got to be you know, mindful of that when we're eating fish is the mercury content. Another liver supporting um, compound is glycine. So you can get this actually in bone broth. So bone broth is great for the liver. You can either get this from store or you can make it yourself, pretty easy to do. But if you just drink, like us say, about a cup a day, um, really, really good to support your liver health as well. The next thing you can try, this is a very um, holistic thing, which is a castor oil pack. Um, I don't know if you've heard of these before, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link to you a video or like on a website, like you know, an article where you can read about this and kind of see pictures, because it's kind of hard to explain. But basically you saturate um, the cloth in castor oil and you apply it um, to where your liver basically sits, so you apply it on the skin, and it helps to draw toxins and remove them out of the liver and just in, basically stimulate your detoxification pathways and clear them. So um, yeah, that's actually a really interesting way that you can um, support the liver um, and is very, very effective. So yeah, I thought that was also worth mentioning if you want to have a little go with that. Now we've spoken a lot about things that you can add in that can support your liver, but let's talk about a couple of things now that you can be mindful and take out. So the first thing is just reducing your toxin exposure. You know, I said at the beginning, you know, even things we touch, our liver has to detoxify. So 
things that you can be mindful of is you know the cosmetics you're using body products anything you're putting on your skin our skin absorbs everything so looking at the ingredients we're using like that's a way we can just minimize our exposure so I think with this one it's kind of a case in my opinion of just pick and choosing your battles I mean if you want to go completely all natural with everything then obviously you do you that's fine um, but there is some products I love that you know aren't completely all natural and I don't really want to stop using them for example I'll pick and choose my battles like anything that I put on my body I keep that super super natural because that's obviously my largest area of skin and I don't want to be absorbing um, you know large amounts of a product all over me definitely get a good natural deodorant because um, your armpits I mean this is going to absorb anything very quickly that you put under there go straight into the bloodstream the key ingredient you want to really avoid there is the aluminium definitely avoid that in your deodorants um, but then you know there obviously there's going to be times with like makeup and stuff that I don't use all natural so you know pick and choose your battle which is just about reducing your exposure where you can other things that you can look at that you possibly touch are things like cleaning products your fabric detergents washing detergents trying to make better choices there can really help just reduce that exposure a bit um, but then also coming away from um, kind of more of the um, external factors look at your food as well so I'm not going to sit and tell you to go completely organic because I personally don't think that's realistic it's so expensive to eat everything organic and I don't even think you have to because the thing is some vegetables actually um, the non-organic version is still fine so what I would recommend doing is look at the dirty dozen and the clean 15 it comes out I think every year they give you the new list and that tells you which vegetables you can afford to buy non-organic and which which ones are definitely better to buy organic because these have the highest amount of um, contaminants basically on them. But I do just want to be clear though, like if you're completely new to supporting your liver, start with the other tips first. Like don't start worrying about your exposure too much and getting like stressed about that, like at the early stages. This is something that comes a bit later after you've started adding more like liver supporting practices into your life. Like we don't want this to become a big stress of oh my god, all the things I'm touching are like affecting my liver. Like it's fine. Fine. Support your actual detoxification process. That is the most important thing. Another thing we want to be mindful of, which I think is an obvious one for most people, is alcohol because we just know that it has such a key link with the liver, especially through disease progressions that we see um, quite frequently, quite sadly, in the world. Um, but yeah, just be mindful of your alcohol and just remember that it is your liver that will be taking on um, that job to, 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 to um deal with it and basically detox it. The other thing also to be mindful of is actually char grilled food and smoked food. So smoked food and like barbecue food, they actually hold um, a lot more like nasty chemicals, things we call carcinogens, which um, means they can be potentially cancerous. Um, and these chemicals that are just produced through these methods, again, your liver has to detoxify and it can just really negatively impact the liver and create a lot of oxidative stress, particularly in the body. So for example, switches are things like, instead of buying smoked bacon just get normal bacon or you know instead of smoked salmon or smoked mackerel just get like the the regular like plain fillet of salmon or you know plain mackerel um so yeah just reducing your exposure in those ways um but of course you know it's summer if you want to enjoy your barbecue here and there it's fine but we're talking about things that are in your diet on a regular basis that's what we want to be mindful of and then the last thing i'm going to leave you with is to support your other detoxification pathways because if your other pathways aren't working well then there's going to be more of a burden on your liver so your other pathways are your skin your gut and your kidneys actually as well so they're also considered a detoxification pathway so i've just posted a video all on how to support your gut health so that will help with that detoxification pathway so go check out that video for those tips and then coming up with future videos i am going to do a video on how to detoxify through your skin and stimulate that pathway as well so if you don't want to miss that make sure you are subscribed to the channel but yeah they're the tips i'm going to leave you with today please let me know if you found this helpful and give it a big thumbs up if you did and also if you want more videos and more tips and please yeah again give this video a thumbs up to let me know this is content you enjoy i really hope you found this video helpful and i really hope that these tips improve your health oh nearly flashed you then um but yeah thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video Mwah. bye